From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Open Line. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Open Line. I'm Carrie Sharp, and tonight's topic is certainly one that you have an opinion on. It's a topic that has divided our nation. It's divided our state in recent years. And tonight we're talking about Tennessee's role in gay marriage and a new uh, bill that's been introduced and how it kind of sorts through it all. I have two folks with me tonight that I want to introduce you to. We have Representative Mark Pody, a Republican out of Lebanon. He'll be talking about the Natural Marriage Defense Act that he introduced uh, just recently. And also, we have Abby Rubenfield, an, uh, Rubenfeld, an attorney and LGBT advocate here in the area. Thank you both for being here tonight. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. This will likely draw a lively debate tonight, uh, some phone calls. Feel free to give us a call on this topic. If you have questions, comments for our guests, we'd be happy to take them. The number is at the bottom of the screen, 615-737+. Plus. But we're going to dive right in with uh, the representative. Tell me about this Natural Marriage Defense Act. What is your aim here? What does it call for? Okay. Back in 2006, the, we passed a constitutional amendment in Tennessee, and it's actually in Article 11, Section 18. And, and Article 11, Section 18 said to the voters, would you like to have marriage defined as a man and a woman in Tennessee? And with over 81% of the vote, this passed uh, the constitutional, uh, it's now our constitutional amendment. And so what this bill does it is nothing more than trying to stand on what we've already passed previously. Um, in fact, what, the, what my bill really says is this. Uh, in this Constitution, when we were passing it, when it was up to the people to vote, we knew the Supreme Court was going to rule one way or the other on this issue sooner or later. And we passed a langu language that says any policy or law or judicial interpretation, and then I'm saying any is what mm -hmm. the language was, uh, purporting to define marriage as anything other than the historic institution between a legal contract between one man and one woman is contrary to the public policy of the state. And it further says that this shall be void and unenforceable in Tennessee. That is in our Constitution. And so when this came out, I'm just saying we should do nothing more than hold up what 81% of our voters in Tennessee said we should do. Your Natural Defense of Marriage Act basically says we don't care what the Supreme Court said. We stand as a state, and we want the power to do that. Is that a, is that a fair synopsis? That would be a very fair synopsis, yes. Abby, I want you to chime in here as, as the lawyer. It's the Supreme Court. Can exactly. You, can you do that? What about the word supreme don't we understand here? The Supreme Court determines the law of the land. It's a basic civics lesson that we all learned in high school or earlier that the Constitution of the United States is supreme. It governs what we do in this country. We fought a civil war in the 1800s about this very issue, whether states could nullify federal actions, and they can't. That side lost 150 years ago, more than that. You can't do this. It's so unconstitutional. It's blatantly unconstitutional. Even the Attorney General's given a venture to opinion, not a formal opinion, that it's unconstitutional. And the $6 billion price tag that's on it, that the Tennessee, uh, the fiscal note that's attached to it, they can add on another half million or million dollars for attorney fees because it will end up in court immediately upon uh, passage if it passes. But the important point to me is that it doesn't matter what 80% of the people that chose to vote in that particular election decided to do. You can't vote on basic constitutional rights of people. That's also a very basic concept in this country. We're not a pure democracy in this country. We're a constitutional democracy. We have a Bill of Rights that the founders chose to add. Uh, marriage is a fundamental right, and everyone's entitled to do it, regardless of your sexual orientation. And, and I also want to say, there's no such thing as gay marriage. There's marriage. There's marriage between same-sex couples, marriage between opposite-sex couples. No difference. That's what the Supreme Court yeah, held. That's what, they that's said what the Jew, law basically. is. Yeah. And that will continue to be the law. Now, Representative Pote, you certainly know the argument that you're up against. This, this cannot come as a surprise to you. Absolutely. So and how do you respond to that? Because the vote was in 2006. It was a vote of the people. We're talking about the Supreme Court. Okay, so first off, let's look at the supremacy clause as I understand it. And, and I would agree with Abby when she says that the Supreme Court 
uh, can say that one state it cannot break federal law. However, the Constitution, I believe, in Article 1, Section 8, it will clearly define what the federal government is allowed to do, what Congress can pass on the laws. And therefore, it continues to say that if this is what the federal government is allowed to do, then our Supreme Court can come in and say we can rule on those issues in Article 1, Section 8. But there's only a set of things that they can do. And if they're ruling on things outside of what the Constitution says, then they're kind of out of bounds. Now, it's interesting that the Supreme Court has actually looked at this uh, position more than one time. Uh, we know then in the 1970s, there was a case, I believe it was in Minnesota, and there was two gentlemen that were trying to get married, and, and that went up to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court at that point ruled, they said, you know what, this is not in the federal jurisdiction. We have no say on this case. So they didn't even hear the case. Then we know that we went into um, just two years before this current ruling, which is in 2013, they, held, they had another opinion. And I believe that was an opinion between two ladies that had gotten married in New York. Um, I believe what happened was that the federal government, Congress, passed a Defense of Marriage Act. And I believe Bill Clinton is the one that had actually signed that, that act. Um, New York went on and passed a law saying that you can have same-sex marriages in New York. So we had the federal mm -hmm. Congress pass one, we had the state pass another. So they both argued that case and it went back to the Supreme Court. And in 2013, 2013, two years before this ruling, the same Supreme Court said it is a state's issue that marriage belongs at the state level and not at the federal level. Now they've come along two years later and have reversed themselves on previous rulings, and which makes it a very interesting conversation to have if they're going to say that it is a state's issue on several mm -hmm. times before that, now they're coming along and saying it's going to be a federal issue. Abby, I see you're shaking your head, so you're familiar with these cases that the representative's talking about. Fill us in on, on well, the Well, first there. of all, that's not what the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution says. It's the Supremacy Clause. It says that the fed federal law is supreme. The Supreme Court decides what the law in this country is, and a state can't then say, nah, we're not going to go by what you say. That, that's not what our country's ever been about. That goes against the basic concept of federalism on which this country was built. And the case in 1978, Baker versus Nelson, that's not what Baker versus Nelson did. They didn't, it's not a case where the Supreme Court even ruled. It was a case, it was a different age in terms of what the law held in those days. It was before many constitutional protections had been um, completely developed by the Supreme Court. And what that case did, the Supreme Court just didn't review it because some law clerk said that there wasn't a f substantial federal question in it. You fast forward 40 years and the Supreme Court knows that there is a very substantial federal question. That case was decided before marriage was determined to be a fundamental right or before there was much law about that. So the law has changed significant, significantly since that time and as a result the Supreme Court did what it did and found that the fundamental right to marriage, there's no rational basis to distinguish between same-sex and opposite-sex couples. And the Windsor case in 2013, even Justice Scalia, the most conservative justice on the court, said in his dissent that this sets it up for marriage equality. All you have to do is switch out federal from state in the language of the Windsor decision. That's the case he's talking about. Um, and comes up with the same result. A, neither a state nor the federal government. What happened in, in our case is they determined that if the federal government can't violate people's rights like that, neither can states. I mean, the fundamental right to marriage should be open to everyone. And the bottom line is, um, there's been marriage equality in Massachusetts for 15 years now. Sky didn't fall in, regular old heterosexual marriage didn't fall apart, the divorce rate didn't really change. Um, it's. It, this is not the issue our legislature should be wasting time and money on. Do we have eight billion dollars to give up in Tennessee to yeah, fight about something about that's eight, irrelevant? Eight dollars, because you say this may not be the the toll of this bill, but the fiscal note on this says we stand to lose eight and a half billion dollars if this were to go through and become law because we would not be complying with federal law they would not give us federal money for things like ten care or the department of human services very needed services in our state that do a lot of good but you disagree that that's the number 
Oh, okay, I'm, I'm not disagreeing that that's the number that the fiscal department put out on the bill. Uh, however, that is their original fiscal note, and I have not gotten the chance to go back and meet with them. It is not uncommon for many of these fiscal notes to, to come out with one number and for us to sit down and see what that real number is going to be. Do so, we stand to lose federal money, though? I don't believe that there's federal issues where the federal government can withhold money. I think there's court cases that you'll probably agree with that this has been out before, that the federal government cannot withhold money if the state is following a legal, justified law in their, in their state. They can't do that. Abby, and, and this can, been, can it's not a, Well, first of all, it's not a legal law. That I mean, would it's, have to be it's the debate. unconstitutional, that would be the debate. so it's, it, we are going to mm -hmm. lose money. The federal government can indeed withhold money if you don't follow its rules. That There's been many Supreme Court cases saying that, that it's a, it's a privilege. It's not a right to get federal money, and if you don't want to go by the rules, you don't get the money. So we will lose money. But before that happens, they'll be in court and they'll be paying us more attorney fees. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're going to take a quick break. I can tell you the phone lines are lit up, so we're going to be getting to your calls very soon. Of course, I have lots of questions too, so stay with us. It's going to be a very good open line tonight, a lively one. Stay with us. This is